It's a healthy audio treat. Radio MD presents Family Food Kitchen with Ellen Briggs and Carolina Jantak. I just love to serve wine with dinner. And however, I struggle. I struggle whether it's just for my family or whether I'm entertaining, what goes best with fish, meat, or even, even a chili, a veggie chili. So I, uh, I needed some help. So we called in Scott Payne. He's a certified wine specialist from the Society of Wine Educators and a wine merchandiser for Wegmans Food Markets. He's here in our family food kitchen to help us figure out what to do with the, with so many that are out there on the shelf. There's so many blends. I get very confused, Scott. Thank you so much for being with us today. Um, so I don't know where to start when I walk into a Wegmans store or any other store that has shelves filled with wines. What's the first thing that should go through my mind? This is a this is a great question because a lot of folks have this question when they walk into a store. They they want to serve wine for dinner, whether it's just for themselves or they have folks coming over. Um, so I try I try to have folks kind of concentrate on the big six grapes. So when we talk about wine. Um, there are thousands of different grape varietals, but there's always a couple great ones that you can start with which should be readily available, whether it's in a Wegman store or your local wine store or local supermarket. Um, and for the whites, those grape varietals are, are Riesling, Chardonnay, or Sauvignon Blanc. And then for our red wines, we have Pinot Noir, Merlot, and Cabernet Sauvignon. Those are probably the, the six varietals I always like to start folks with to get them started on their wine journey. Okay, so do you ask what they're serving for dinner that night and, and say, okay, you're having fish? What right. do you serve? With, or, or does it matter if it's halibut or salmon? You know, I get very it, confused. Help me out. And it does. It does, absolutely. So if you're having a great, you know, North Atlantic halibut, uh, we really would probably want to go lighter. You know, this fleshy white, you know, white flesh fish um, will typically go very well with a Sauvignon Blanc. Um, and again, that Sauvignon Blanc could come from New Zealand or it could come from, um, you know, one of the great wine regions of Bordeaux. When you get over to salmon, though, we want to change it up a little bit because salmon has a little bit more of these great omega-3s and a little bit of this, this, these good fats for us. And we might want to go to a lighter red like a Pinot Noir, um, which can handle a little bit more of the body of the salmon. And also how they prepare the dish um, can help us with that as well. If they're just going to pan sear something versus... Um, blackening the salmon, in which case it's going to have a lot more flavor. We want the wine and the food to, to try to be about the same weight and balance each other out so, so neither one overtakes the taste profile in your mouth. Wow, that's so interesting. I mean, you really do need a uh, an expert right with you when you're shopping for these things because there's <laughs> so much that goes into it. Um, and you're right, though, because it, if there isn't a, a nice compliment there, it just it just doesn't work. Or you may say the wine wasn't that great, and it's not the wine's fault. It's just the way you paired it with the wrong meals. So um, I'm glad that we have your help here today. So let's talk about chicken. <laughs> what about chicken? What should we, you know, it's a simple dish, so it may not be like a fancy dinner, but a nice bottle of wine may still go well with the with some chicken. And so it, And I think with chicken or with poultry, um, Chardonnay is fantastic. And I want to make sure because we have some customers that come in and, and Chardonnay is one of those uh, grape varietals that seems people either really like or sometimes they, they're the ABC shopper, anything but Chardonnay. So we want to oh. make sure we can um, help them out with that. <laughs> so we have our, picky. you know, ca- <laughs> exactly. We have our big, um, you know, California Chardonnays, which can be very big, large mouth feel, um, which go, whether it's chicken or pork or pork loin or something like that, which are really good. But you know, a lot of that tends to come from the oak that's used. So we there's a lot of un-oaked Chardonnays on the market, which are great um, and can be a little softer on the palate. So sometimes it's finding the right style of Chardonnay that works. But for chicken and poultry, Chardonnay is just such a great option. Okay, so I'm already getting confused. <laughs> Sorry. <Okay. laughs> so hard. Because there's... Um, let, let's let's jump over it a minute to talk about whether it's a sweet or dry wine or how do we determine um, whether what the complementary features are of that wine. Does that make sure. sense? Is that a good question? It, it, it can be. Um, and we could talk a little bit about the We just talked about Chardonnay. Let's talk about one of the, the wines that has a little more what we would call residual sugar or the definitely sweetness in it, which would be the Riesling grape. 
Typically, okay. you know, a California Chardonnay right, might run you about 14% or higher in alcohol um, and have less residual sugar, whereas a Riesling grape might run you about 7% alcohol and have a higher sugar content. Oh. So there's going to be a little bit more sweetness to that. And that comes from how the grapes are fermented. So we have these great grapes, where, regardless of what the grape is, what varietal it is, and we add yeast to that. And so the yeast start eating the grapes, you're eating the sugar, and they're going to produce two things. They're going to produce alcohol, and they're going to produce carbon dioxide. So coming out of that, um, out of that transaction, you can stop the yeast from eating all the sugar in the grape, and that's what results in some residual sugar. So when we talk about some styles of wine uh. that are sweeter, that can happen. So if we don't allow the, the yeast to eat all the grape sugar, there's going to be some leftover grape sugar for folks to actually enjoy in the bottle. I uh, see. And again, that also keeps our alcohol percentage a little bit lower. And I know some folks, when they're dining out or just prefer to have a, you know, a lower level of alcohol, and Riesling is a great uh, style of wine that uh, can provide that for them. Boy, that was really helpful. Thank you so much for that little little um, under, uh, overview of how this works. So if I'm going to serve um, uh, roast beef or, or steak or uh, beef, even burgers, obviously yep. I'm not going to go for a sweet. So I should no. go for the, the higher alcohol content one, which would be what? Well, I would I would think that with beef and it, and I'll give you two two options here. With beef, if you're going to do a roast for like a holiday dinner, uh, we want to go to a Cabernet Sauvignon. Uh, I think that's a fantastic pairing, and Cabernet Sauvignon is a big big flavor, like like a, a, a nice roast for for the upcoming holidays would be. Uh, that would be great. Um, but I think that if you're going to go with burgers or something on the grill, sometimes we tilt a little bit towards. You could still have Cabernet, but sometimes we'd also go towards potentially a Zinfandel grape as well. Um, depending yeah. on what kind of beef we're doing on the grill. But barbecue always kind of ticks a little bit towards uh, the Zinfandel grape, which there's some great red, red Zinfandels out there as well. Um, yeah. Well, we definitely don't want to leave our vegetarian friends out of this. It seems like right. when you pick a bottle of wine, you have to know if you're having fish, chicken, or beef. But what if you're having a vegetarian meal? Is there a nice wine that complements that? There is, and, and it's actually kind of one of our most versatile wines, which is actually sparkling wine. Uh, sparkling wine has a, a very, very food-friendly, um, and sometimes when you're going to somebody's house and you're not sure what to bring because you may not know what you're eating, sparkling wine is, is absolutely fantastic for that, and it's great with vegetarian dishes. And we know that people are trying to eat healthy and trying to get more fruits and vegetables into their diet, so sparkling wine can be great. And we don't have to think of just sparkling wine in terms of champagne from France. Um, there's Prosecco from Italy. There's great, some great Cava wines from Spain. And then there's some great um, American sparkling houses that are doing some great stuff. Um, and sparkling wine doesn't have to be just for special occasions. It can really be for um, yourself. It can be for just a nice dinner at home as well. So uh, sparkling wine is a, is a great option for vegetarian meals and just for, just for a nice treat for yourself as well. I love that. It sounds phenomenal. And um, now that we have a wine to go with every dish, I think we're all set for any time and holiday time coming up. So that's wonderful. Thank you so much, Scott, for going over that with us. And if anybody has any more questions, I know they can find your Pairing Wines with Meals 101 blog, which is on Wegmans.com. And that is W-E-G-M-A-N-S.com. And they can find all the tips they need over there. And maybe they can plan their next meal around the wine instead of the wine around the meal, right? Absolutely. <laughs> so, thank you again, Scott. <laughs> thank Thanks, you again, Ellen. Scott, Thanks, for Carolina. being with us. Absolutely. Thank you. Have a great Remember, day. Everybody, you to remember, you can always listen to us on RadioMD.com. That's where you find all our past episodes. If you want to listen to one again or share one with a friend, this is a great one to share with somebody. Um, remember to eat well and stay well. Ooh, 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 ooh.